So Lou is in the building. He founded this firm 31 years ago. He's at the top of his game, and he will introduce our wonderful speakers tonight and moderate the discussion. Lou? As Andrew mentioned, we have the, the most the largest and most talented group of uh, people that we've ever had. And when I started, there was just one, me. <laughs> and I wanted to mention our style, which I think many of you know, but I'm going to mention it in a slightly different way. Instead of calling it value, I'm going to call it contrarian thinking, which is very close and when we do contrarian, we don't just be, want to do it to be argumentative. We do it when we have a fundamental um, underpinning for what we're saying. And the contrarian person attempts to deviate from consensus by having an opinion that is different than what other people's opinions are, but is also correct. And if you do that, you can and you should outperform the market. Outperforming can mean on an absolute basis or on a risk-adjusted basis. Uh, but let me give you some ideas of contrarian thinking, going against what the consensus is saying. And in the past, we differed with consensus in 2008 when uh, many people were saying the U.S. is finished, it's on its way down economically. I don't think there are many people who would say that now. The second is the comic politicians in Washington are, can't talk to one another, therefore our deficits are going to go up, up, and up and there's nothing that can be done about it. Well, we still have the comic, some comic people in Washington, but the deficit is no longer considered a problem, and we differed, from, and I've written and talked to you about that, and uh, it's something that should not be a problem in the United States for many years uh, to come. There will come a time when it will be, when Obamacare's uh, medical costs uh, require some additional decision making, but that's many years from now, and uh, we really don't have to deal with it now. It would be good to deal with it now, but we don't. Uh, but we're likely not going to do that. What about current contrarian thinking? The consensus says we are still in recession. We can't get out because middle income people can't get jobs. Well, um, I'm not sure that that's really the case. I'm sh as a matter of fact, it isn't. Actually, initial unemployment claims are now at a seven-year low. It's not only that people are leaving the wage uh, force, the labor force, that we have the decline in unemployment. There are jobs that are being being given out all the time. And here's something that could be of interest. The economy keeps moving uh, along. We're going to have tightened labor market. And tightened labor market is going to result in higher wage rates, first in selected uh, markets, that is, uh, geographic markets and occupational markets, and then more widespread. Then when you have pockets of shortages of labor, what do you think happens to wage rates? They go what? Up. Up. And guess who's going to be the beneficiary of that? Middle-income people, the people who are squeezed today, legitimately squeezed today, are going to be in better shape. And when they're in better shape, they're going to buy more. People will become more optimistic, and growth has a strong potential to accelerate. The byproduct of that is something that 
perhaps isn't as favorable, which is called inflation. And inflation is something that we're going to have to be careful about. Uh, and when it starts, I don't believe the Federal Reserve is going to be as watchful over it. I think that Yellen is going to say, if infl inflation is caused, by the way, by higher wage rates, it's not so much caused by commodity prices. Commodities aren't as important to our economy now as they were 50 years ago. So when wage rates uh, move up, you get uh, higher inflation, but you also get more money in the pockets of people. And I think that's what Yellen would like to see. And so she's not going to stop when inflation is at two. In my mind, she'll stop when inflation is at four. Uh, but that's just a rule of thumb uh, idea. So that can be considered a contrarian way of thinking. I'm not going to bet my last dollar on it happening, but I think there's a reasonable chance that it could happen. And uh, stock markets under a pickup in um, a, the economy are not really that expensive. If the economy doesn't pick up, then the stock market is considerably ahead of itself. And we're watching out for, right now, for speculative fever. It's much more negative than John Travolta's Saturday Night Fever. You all remember that, don't you? Uh, and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And very recently, uh, what we have done is moved some money. We had made some money, a good amount of money, by putting in sector funds uh, in uh, the finance area, mostly bank-related, a domestic one and an international one. That was my son's insistence going against the grain. And uh, they turned out to be the best uh, investments that we made, each of them, when we liquidated them, were up about 65%. And what we did is swap that for a fund. These are very volatile. Uh, for the financial funds are very volatile. And we swapped it for a uh, long-short fund. And if you want to know more about long-short, you tune into. Uh, lunch with Lou in July.